Hello everyone, this is That's My Pizza again with uh, another Langris Home Mobile video, and today I want to, well, I kind of want, like I said in my video last week, I want to try to review Apex matches uh, every su uh, every Sunday at this time, each week, because eh, eh, it gives me something to do Sunday Sunday mornings, and I could also improve I could also you know, could also help me improve my own game playing, but in case um, I didn't get too much input on which streams to review except for one, and, and that's from my guildmate here, Tears, and he just wants me to review each of the games on his guild card. So I'm gonna go do that, and once I'm done with this, I'm gonna review the few games I played yesterday, and then I think. We'll go from there. In any case, let's jump into the first match against um, Tears versus Xanatos. And it looks like all of this was played last week, though. I think that these replays might be broken due to the new patch, so let me just double check. So I might not actually be able to review any of these games, unfortunately. So yeah, so let's just double check the boxes. Well, I guess even if the replays are broken, I can always just do commentary on the pick ban phases because that's always helpful. So I'm looking at Xanatos' box here, and it's a bit focused on single targets with uh, essentially two tanks. And here, Tears is also kind of kind of the same, though he has, uh, from the looks of it, yeah, two tanks as well. Um, how many? No, three tanks, two healers, and then the rest is kind of just single target meta stuff, which is good and all. So I'm just kind of curious why Tears didn't just ban out his, um, yeah, his his Christian right here because he ha he has three tanks. So if a tank is banned out here, uh, he can just pick one up, or Tears could. Just pick, first pick like a single target DPS like Wedem, and then pick a second pick a uh, tank because he has three tanks. But in any case, he bans out Wedem because uh, most Wedems like in high level play have spirit boots and they can pretty much run across the map and hit somebody uh, turn one as P1, which is a kind of annoying, but it really wouldn't be a huge deal since Tears has three tanks in his box. In any case, on to the next one. He bans out. Uh, uh, Rosen Seal, which, yeah, fine, and then it's not a, that wasn't a really good ban because Liana is generally a bit more powerful, a bit more powerful as P2 with her act again, plus she can also dispel debuffs from basically the one or two AoE characters that Xanatos has. In any case, oh, Xanatos picks up, um... Epsilon first, which is a pretty good pick. And then Tears picks up Liana first, which honestly gives him a pretty big advantage since he can kind of cheese stuff around. So here, um, Xantos bans out Wedem and Epsilon, which they're okay, but I think Epsilon would kind of struggle in this meta. So, well, Epsilon would kind of struggle because all of Xantos' characters are very long range and some of them can survive. Um, his 3C. So here I'd probably go something like Gintoki in all honesty because he can, Gintoki can pretty much sweep a lot of these melee units. The only ones he'd really have to look out for are these three units. Uh, look out for would be Life Genesis, Crescia, and uh, Iron Blood. Here he picks up Sherry, which is incredibly questionable because Tears still has two tanks. Yeah, still has two tanks. And then. Uh, he gets, he bans out the Obora, which does not really synergize very well with Xanatos' team, and then he bans out the Light of Genesis, which, good pit, good ban, but I would have gone Lucretia and Light of Genesis, since Light of Genesis has the teleport shenanigans, and Lucretia is just a pain to deal with. So he picks up Lucretia here, and then he bans out Sherry and Light of Genesis, which is pretty good, but now... Uh, Xantos picks up Iron Blood, which synergizes very well with these two picks, and it will give him a bit more offensive powers, so uh, Tears really wants to pick up something very long-ranged, or his Iron Blood 
is Iron Blood, so probably something like Elwin would be good here. Elwin or Iron Blood would be good, or um, Gintoki. And then he picks up Oboro. Why? <laughs> Why Oboro? <laughs> this guy is gonna run at you, and you're gonna get no time to set up Oboro. Okay, well, it kind of works, I guess, but not optimal in my opinion. And then bans out the um, Elwin, Elwin and the Elwin and um, uh, what's your name? Uh, I wouldn't have banned out um. Uh, Helena, honestly, because you still have three tanks that can easily ta take Helena. So, yeah. Yeah, and here it picks up Christian for the faction buff, which honestly he should not have done. He should have picked up another DPS here. But he's left the L win, which is okay, I guess. <laughs> Anyways. This should be... Par should be fairly... Oh, God. Why did... Okay. Okay. That was not a good pick. Like, Angels here is not very good. Because... They're gonna just break through Angels because they have physical damage and... Yeah, a mix of physical damage and magic damage. Going something like Highland Warriors would probably be better since they have generally have better troop stats. Uh, in any case, uh, I'll be pretty interested to see where this goes. So essentially, Xantos is positioning his, <laughs> positioning his units in a way so he can just rush in. And I think, let me see what's going on here. So, okay, so Oboro's out of range, so he's safe from the Elwin. Well, not the Elwin, but the, the, what's his name? Epsilon. And then, yeah, the, yeah, the general act again, so he can start getting Obor up quicker. Which is, okay, huh, okay. And he's not gonna speed boost his assassins, interesting. Yeah, because normally what people do is just speed boost their assassins, like Sherry and Epsilon in this case, but he's speed boosting the the Zusa, which, not bad, because she can take a hit, take a hit, but still, it's pretty... Lucretia could just go in poker with a uh, like weak skill and then just teleport back, but eh, we'll see. And then, ooh, jeez, <laughs> Santos is just getting super lucky with all the breezes. To be honest, let me see what this Sherry has. Honestly, um, I probably would have just positioned um, Elwin so he could touch that, touch that Sherry if she goes in because. Even with Bree, she'd only have 10, uh, 10, yeah, 10 move, yeah, only 10 movement, and Elwin potentially could have tanked a hit from Sherry if he was, like, Swordsmith, and had, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, the um, Royal Cavalry, but that's neither here nor there at this point. So, yeah, pretty much Obora's getting ready to go, and he pretty much needs to get Oboro going, like, next turn. Because uh, Xantos' entire team is coming at him, and uh, there is no way Oboro could survive that. Survive that, like, honestly, he put a, probably should have saved the act again on turn one, acted again him here, teleported Oboro in, and just take taken a life off of uh, Epsil uh, Sherry, Epsilon, or Iron Blood, because that would have given him a little bit more flexibility. So shift position, yeah, that's a smart move, but now the now the Lucretia is pretty much dead meat. Okay, and that's a very dead Sherry. But now, um... She's gonna be in a lot of tr Okay, so now he's gonna get a uh, turn priority. Interesting. So, she goes in, takes Lucretia's first life. Lucretia is gonna definitely die here. Uh, that's honestly a pretty bad trade. Let me see. Yeah, because what Lucretia could do... Oh, she might not be able to do that. Well, what I'm thinking... Oh, that's... Yeah. 
I don't think that was a good move. Like, here he should have tried to challenge the Kresha more by uh, moving in, popping her passive with the puppet, and then smacking her with uh, 3C, which he did not have. Which is kind of bad, because honestly, Elwyn could just go in and deal with the Epsilon. But he's going to get trapped by this uh, sh sissy really soon. Or not. Yeah, because in all honesty... What the heck? Wait, what? What the... Okay, he needs to go for the... Okay, so he can't go for the Epsilon. What the heck? What the heck is going on here? Okay. So the Lucretia finally gets killed. Yeah. And then Epsilon's pretty much just gonna clean up at this point because Tears is just not taking any opportunities to uh, attack or anything. He really needs to be more offensive here. I think, yeah, there, down goes Aboro. Yeah, and now um, he only has Elwyn here, and Elwyn really can't do much at this point. Yeah, because he's just going to get trapped in the fog. He really needed to get Elwyn out of there earlier. And this is kill's going to whiff. And then um, Azusa's just going to get her town back up, and this is pretty much over. Yeah, wait, what? Oh, that's interesting. Yep, Talon comes back up, and then... Elwyn does absolutely nothing. Yeah, that's pretty much over. Yeah, I really don't need to see the end of this, because Elwyn has no life. He's pretty much trapped there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not even going to bother. Because at this point, there's nothing he can... Uh, Tears can do. Like, he needs to be a lot more offensive and make more trades, because... He had plenty of revives, so he could have been a lot more aggressive against that team. Also, Xanatos could play better as well, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> okay, on to the next match, uh, which is Shenlong, which I have no idea what that is. I think that might be just a practice match. Okay, so let's see what Shadow Deli Shadowed Light has. So, oh boy, that's this is a very AOE tank team. So, what really... Tears really wants to focus on here is just assassins and probably get rid of any extra like high mobility of revives so probably the high priority bands would be um, Iron Blood, uh, Lucretia, and Yulia and also probably uh, Light of Genesis but that, that's a bit lower priority. Oh also in, and uh, what's her name? Uh, Lana. And uh, Tears loses... What's your name? So this pretty much is a terrible p first pick. Like, what the heck? Here he's basically saying, Oh, I want to play... Um, I really, really want to play uh, Yulia or Lana by first picking uh, her. So right, Tears should, right now should realize that, that you gotta get the units that are really annoying to deal with with a gossip, like a debuff immunity. So these two... And he bans out Kruger and Light of Genesis. Yeah, this... not great. So Tears picks up his own healer, which he sh honestly should have just gone Epsilon first. Be Epsilon and then go into... Um, what's his name? Lost him, because he's not a really good... He doesn't really need to deal with the tanks at all. He's made... because all of Shad Shadowed Light's stuff is just like AoE stuff. So yeah, he loses Lost Him and the Wedum, and he picks up Iron Blood. So he's like, okay, I'm really committing to picking up Yulia or Lana. <laughs> okay, and then he p bans out Yulia and uh, Lucretia, which, uh, good picks, but I think he's going to pick up Lana here right now. Okay, Epsilon, yep. Loses... The Epsilon support and Elwyn, which is fine. He picks up Bozel for some reason. That's super weird. Because Epsilon will, can easily go, like, dunk a Bozel, no, no problem. Okay, so Lana and Kurtz is out, are out. And he picks... Why do you keep picking a Boro, man? Like, well, I guess it could work here, but... 
Oboro is not that great. And then... So he's just gonna go... Yeah, he's just gonna go uh, tank push with AoEs. It's really nothing too special to deal with. And yeah, Oboro in this case would actually kind of be fine, but you're just pretty much banking on Shadowed Light not coming and hitting your ass in turn one or two or three. And so, honestly, you Tears does not need a tank here. Well, actually kind of does against the Iron Blood, but that's not a big deal. And he bans out those two, and he picks up uh, Lucretia, which, pretty good pick. And then, why doesn't Shadowed Light ban out... Uh, oh yeah, because he had, still had three tanks. So yeah, Tears uh, had a decent ban pick ban phase. I think he's going to win this one. Yeah, I think he does win this one. So yeah, Fury of the Roses. So Shadow Light's pretty much just going to be pushing in, and then Tears is going to just be sitting his Oboro back there to transform. And just um, something that I generally notice about Oboro players is, is rather than sticking them in, like, in spawn, I, they usually move them slightly to the side, so it's a bit harder to deal with the Oboro. And they have to overextend a bit to actually get to the Oboro. But that really depends on what's going on. Oh, and the, bre the breeze from Tenyos, that's funny. Ooh, I actually would be a bit... Okay, yeah, I'd be a bit more cautious here with Epsilon because... Uh, Bozel and uh, and Saintist can easily poke him. Like, honestly, it'd be smarter just to throw him in the side. And even here... Since it's so AoE heavy, it probably would have been better to, uh, instead of have Shadow Stealth, it use the 1C assass uh, Assassinate move. I forgot what that one's called. Anyways, we're just seeing him push forward, and yeah, he. Re I think Tears really needs to get, whatchamacallit, built up uh, Highland Warriors, because it just deals with most situations pretty well. And then Ode to Creation goes down on the, shit, the Christian. Pretty good. And then I wonder if um, this this you, this Liana has... Uh, yeah, that's Juggler Plushie. So yeah, nothing too interesting happening so far. Yeah, Saintist, 3 Cs, does not a lot, to be honest. And then Magic Pulse here. And that does absolutely nothing. Uh, and Lucretia is pretty much going to be doing nothing, though. The spell's not bad. But it does a lot of damage. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, and that's a very dead Epsilon. Yeah, like I said, he should have just thrown Epsilon to the side. Because <laughs> that's just a wasted Epsilon now. Oh, yeah, now the. Oh, that was a pretty smart move. And then, I think... Yeah. Oh, Freya doesn't quite go down here, but she's gonna die very soon. Jeez Louise. Damn. Yeah, Tears is just being really reckless with his DPS units. Like... Just the... Yeah, just the positioning on every, all of his units are just very lacking. But this shouldn't do too much, because uh, Liana can just heal that all up. Because luckily he didn't get uh, debuffed. But also, pretty much at this point... Um, Shadow Light is just running out of options to deal with the Oboro. Because the Oboro is just going to... Get tier four stacks of his, of his channeling and just dunk, completely dunk him. Okay, ah, that's funny. And here, um, shift position, magic pulse, and then I think she's gonna throw down a dispel again. Yep. Spell goes down. 
And Jesus Louise, this... Yeah, luckily he gets turn one, uh, turn one move in, so now he can heal up his Lucretia. Also, you should have thrown that on Lucretia, to be honest. Yeah, and it's just getting to the point where, uh, that's a waste. Obora's already immune to all debuffs at this point. Oh, there goes the the puppet. Why did he do that? That was silly. Oh, I think stuff is starting to break down. So yeah. Fortunately, I don't get to see any more of this match. But yeah, I assume what would have happened is Obora just transforms with. With four sacks and just complete, uh, yeah, cleans up. Okay, so on to the next one. We'll see if this one doesn't break as well. Okay, so Tears is P1, loses his Wedum, and what does this box have? Apex Loser. Okay, so it's a very offensive box. Has, yeah, this is complete rush with basically no rush support. <laughs> Which is kind of funny, in honesty. Like, in rush support bo rush boxes, you'd usually see, like, um, well, you'd see pretty much this. Well, more this, but there'd also be, like, maybe a juggler to just jump in turn one as a, as the chivalry, the cavalry one. You'd also see Akka, or you'd see, um, Leticia, of all people. <laughs> In any case, um, rush boxes generally don't do too good against P1. But in any case, um, Wedum gets banned first because he's basically the banner of any rush boxes existence. Same with uh, Gintoki. And then Tears picks up Liana here, which uh, a bit questionable, but I guess it works since Rosen Seal really can't do anything against us all these single target assassins. So Wedum goes down. Tears is pretty much safe since he has the three tanks. And he starts banning out these single target heroes. Why did you pick up Christian here? That's You need to really pick up your offensive units first because this team, like all of these offensive units have like some self-sustain or revival or yeah. So you just need to make sure that they die real quickly. And Oboro is a terrible pick in this match. So please do not pick him third pick. Okay, Kentucky is going to be really hard to deal with at this point. Then, yeah, rush support and teleportation support. God dang it, stop picking Oboro, third pick. He's not a good DPS. Like, even Elwyn would have been good here. Or Light of Genesis. But, uh Dear, stop picking Oboro, please. You're hurting my soul. <laughs> Okay, so Sherry goes down. Pretty good pick. Uh, Elwyn gets banned, which very good ban. And then Tears ends up with three, uh, two tanks to pick from, which is a pretty common issue with three tank boxes. Uh, mm, yeah, I can't really say if, uh, couldn't really tell if Grenier would be a better pick. In any case, here we go. This Tears really had a hard time in that pick ban phase, and I don't. He's in a huge disadvantage in all honesty. Uh, uh, just a few optimization things. If you're bringing a setup like this with Hilda, you generally want to use the um, the dominating formation first because uh, the oh, the buff, the guard increase range from Crimson Command overwrites this one and has priority over it. So you can't you can't uh, essentially stack the guard increase range from these two. To, if you use this skill, af, uh, use dominating formation after Crimson Command. So generally, by using um, um, dominating formation first, you can extend your extend your uh, guard increase range to four turns rather than three. In any case, so Sherry, honestly, he she should not be using the Elf Knights here. She should be using a melee knight so she can kill off something with. Uh, with uh, Raging Storm, because all the units, units are very tanky or have have revives. So you want to be able to burst them down. Off of Arc. Uh, yeah, the only real issue I kind of see with Apex Loser's team is that he's kind of using a rushed box, 
that requires one turn of setup. <laughs> Except for Wedham. Because, um... McLean actually can't use his stuff until he, like, uses his 3C, so he doesn't get that assassinate skill. He only has Raging Waves, which is kind of a shitty, uh, well, it's a decent, it's a decent, uh, AoE that sets down the terrain. And then Epsilon can't do squat until he gets his, um, faction buff up. Lord of the Storm, and, uh, here, uh, I think Tears learns that, um that uh, McLean's terrain works on uh, on uh, terrain master units. I learned that last week. It was pretty funny. So yeah, Sherry can't pressure any of these units, unfortunately, due to that, like, the... due to that. And also, uh, Tears completely forgot to throw Boro into um, his channeling phase, so yeah, this is pretty much game over for him. So yeah, Sherry can't do anything, and then Tears just... Um, Apex Loser can just run up and just smack his entire team. So, yeah, he Shadow Stells. I think Tears is saving the um, Dominating Formation for Epsilon, but that's a terrible... a terrible reason to save that skill. Why did he use... Oh, he's probably gonna throw down the... Yep. Get the cooldown reset, and then just kind of trap his uh, Tears in the back. I'm glad that Tears decided to use uh, Jacob Orf much. Why didn't he attack? Oh, because he didn't charge. So yeah, now Obor's dead. Oh, Obor doesn't die. Yeah, I think he. Yeah, he didn't charge two turns, so he didn't get the range increase. So yeah, he's pretty much useless now. Yeah. And then yeah, now he finally goes down. Yeah, this is pretty much over. Yeah, Tears just made a lot of mistakes. Okay, and I think what's gonna happen here is, um... Yeah, Tears is way too focused on breaking that shield, because now he just has nothing to do. Yeah, like, pretty much nothing. Oh. Ah, that's funny! Shout out to Alice Hazard. So, Wedham's pretty much gonna be doing nothing here. <laughs> because he got... He got farted into the into the dominating formation terrain. Yeah, it's gonna do nothing. It's gonna reset uh, Epsilon's shield here, I think. Nah, no. Well, in any case, Tears has pretty much got nothing going for him at this point anyway, so it's not, it doesn't really matter. Oh, yeah, and Cherry's gonna die here. So yeah, this is game over. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what I'd have to say about that is uh, Tears, you made way too many mistakes. You didn't charge your Oboro. You didn't really pick any good DPS to deal with any of the stuff that um, that Apex Loser was going to be using. So, yeah, I would just say focus on learning how to use your DPS units a bit more. Especially Oboro, since you love to pick him. So, yeah, let's go on to the next match. Uh, I think I'm gonna lose my mind if he Tears picks Obora thir um, in uh, spot three again. Okay, so what I'm just gonna get banned. Let's see what Leark is using. So Leark is kind of using a very standard uh, tank push box, to be honest. It's very interesting. Yeah, honestly, Tears, I don't think you need to ban first, bi first pick ban. Uh, Wedum, especially if your uh, Grenier can take a hit from Wedum, because you have three tanks, you can, and Wedum is pretty much all AOE, uh, all single target or AOE in a rush box. And so, yeah, Leoric is g probably looking to go um, Yulia or Lana if Tears can start to go assassins but that might be a bit hard to run assassin so yeah fair uh, fair bands and uh, so essentially here tears is saying i bet you're gonna be going aoe so i don't really care if you pick uh pick uh this dude or this girl and yeah and then here uh, tears loses his borrow and sherry so now he's forced to pick a tank here so in this case, probably the better pick would be Hilda. 
and then Gintoki goes down, which it's probably going to be a bit hard to deal with since he is fairly tanky. So if Tears probably wants to pick it up, pick up Epsilon here, since he can kill Gintoki before he uh, transform, well, gets a shit ton of shit tons of power, but he's also forced to pick a tank, so he's kind of in a bad spot. And then Leoric definitely uh, bans out his assassins, which. Yeah, now here's is just going to be in a very hard spot because now he can't deal with anything and he also de has to deal with a Yulia who really murders deal like murders uh, tanks. And now Tears picks up Kentucky, but I think it's going to be a bit harder for him for Tears to actually use Kentucky in this situation. And then he loses his loses his Sherry and Sherry and what's her name? Lucretia. And then he Leorg picks up her, his healers and he bans out. Oh, yeah. And honesty would have been better to ban out Hilda since you have a just a crap ton of dispel units at the moment. Well, you have two, but point still stands that having a second tank in there is just going to be hard to deal with. And then he picks up Hilda. Oh, he picks up the Sophia. So, yeah, that's not even a big deal, anyways. Mm. Light of Genesis. Okay, well, I guess that's the best hand he got, got dealt. And then, yeah, um, Gintoki's just running in with soldiers, and it's basically just a rush to claim the claim the middle. And then uh, Leoric is just buffing up his Gintoki. I wonder how tanky it is. That's really not tanky at all. Yeah, this is a five-star Kentucky as well. Wow, that this is just very low bulk. So he speed boosts his DPS units, which is a good idea, but I'm not too sure if he'll be very effective since he doesn't. Did he bring mass? Did he bring mass attack on her? No, it was discipline, which is interesting. Yeah, because without an attack buff, uh, Light of Genesis, Gintoki, and uh, Iron Blood are just going to bounce off this Christian. And yeah, pretty standard stuff on Leoric, to be honest, so I'm not really going to comment on it. So yeah, Leoric is basically going to be <clears throat> just run in with, with his very tanky Christian, who will basically never die, and claim the center. And then he'll either... Uh, um, completely shit on tears with Yulia and Gintoki, or he'll just win by claiming the center and just being unkillable. So, full bloom, yeah. So, okay. One more issue I'm having with tears is that he's not moving towards the center at all when he kind of needs to, because the he's just going to get fogged out, or he's just going to lose control of the center if he doesn't move in. So yeah, Leoric is pretty much just positioning himself in the center, and I have no idea what that position was. So yeah, Leoric has already gotten the center, and there's basically nothing Tears can do. So Radiant Glow. You know, what are the stats? Huh. Yeah, just the still really low stats. Okay. So yeah... Tears is pretty much just scared to commit, and I can see why, because none of his stuff really does anything. He really can't do much at this point, and yeah, even though he has Scooter Dash, I think Scooter Dash is inferior to um, Sword Soul, because in a lot of situations, you just want to spam. Well, you want to just kill your units rather than reposition your enemy. So yeah, um, Tears is just running out of, just running out of time, because he really just needs to go in. What the heck? At this point, I think Leoric, um, Tears is just panicking. I have no idea what he's doing at this point. Because, yeah, that's not even going to break angels. Yeah. And then, yeah, she just gets healed back to full. And Yulia finally can go in, but... Yeah. So what's probably going to happen is... Well, actually, he's probably not going to send in Yulia yet. Because he already... Ha um, Leoric already has the center, so he really doesn't need to do anything. Yeah, and then 
Yeah, this Light Genesis just can't do any damage to this, uh, to this Christiane since she has angels, and now his get uh, Leorx Gintoki is just building up stacks. Yeah, there's yeah this at this point Tears is just too scared to do anything, and he probably should have just surrendered. Yeah, and now Tears pretty much has control of the center, and there's nothing he can do at this point. Yeah. Yeah, like, in this meta, you really gotta be... Do you really think Leoric needs to go in? He's not. Okay, so yeah, now Leoric basically has all of the center under wraps. Oh yeah, he's just gonna kill off uh, Tears of Gintoki. Now, because he's gonna be trapped in fog. Yep. Free kill for the arc. And now Yulia's gonna get in stun or whatever. It doesn't really matter at this point. Cause like I said, Leorc has already has control of the center. Yeah, and this is gonna be doing absolutely nothing. And she almost dies in return, which is, yeah. 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 Yeah, this is pretty much, I'm just gonna fast forward since it seems like Tears really can't do anything at this point, and he doesn't really have the Kurt. Well, yeah, he just doesn't have the uh, damage to do anything to this. Uh, yep, she dies. Uh, then he gets locked down, really can't do anything, and Gintoki just goes in, starts sweeping up uh, Tears' of units, and then, yeah, that's pretty much game over. Okay, and then last one is Liliana versus Tears. I'll see you. What's going on here? So, Liliana. Ooh, this is. Uh... Heavy, yeah, this is a heavy princess. We're getting carnation box, which is kind of funny. You never really see those very often, but there's only, well, there's three healers. And what Tears is kind of worried about at the moment is the iron blood due to all the, the, which Ma calls it, all the assassin, the assassins and the infantry units that could benefit from her, which, fair enough. Also, there's not a wedum, so he doesn't instant ban that, that guy. Okay, Tears loses his Rosen Seal, and then Liliana picks up Hilda, and I'm gonna take a look, quick water break, one sec. Alright, so what else is going on here? Alright, so I think just... Really, strategic-wise, um, Tears might want to rethink it to see what he's really comfortable playing, because I think the three three tanks and two healers is just not really working out for him very well. Because he's just en ends up picking up his healers and his tanks just a little too early, and he's not really getting any of his DPSs on the board that can actually decide matches. Uh, but first, Liliana picks up uh, Hilda to pretty much buff out his entire box, which... Yeah, whatever, but it's still a tank, and generally, they're not too impactful. Depend so, Liliana loses the AoEs, well, loses Mosul, loses uh, Lucretia, which, Lucretia banned, pretty good. Uh, but, here, I probably, based on what is left, I probably would have banned something else out, depending on what he wanted to play. In any case, I can't think of what he would, I would have picked, so I'll just say that's a pretty good ban. And now uh, Tears picks up Liana, not a bad pick, especially his P2. But now he's going to start losing DPS is here. And Michelle goes down, which pretty much says you should probably pick up. Pretty much tells me that you probably want to pick up something that can deal with Hilda or just take no damage from uh, Michelle. So probably Kentucky would be a good pick here. Uh, if you wanted to be a more offensive and assassinate stuff, uh, Lost Town would have been a good pick. Lucretia is just generally a good pick. 
And then he picks up Lost Ham. Eh, not a bad. Definitely a good pick, especially on this map. And then he loses the Oboro, so he can't actually pick that third third per, third turn. And then he, he picks up uh, uh, what her, whatever her name is. And then he's forcing uh, Liliana to pick up... Uh, <clears throat> pick up Liana here and then he picks up Lucretia I'm kind of glad Tears is moving away from picking his tanks too early so what is going on here so okay he's picking up the licorice which not not, not the best healer but it might be be hard for him here I would pick up light Genesis but instead he picks up Christiane which he really didn't need to pick up pick up a tank here since he still had a tank open and then Florence, yeah, Florence goes down, whole full reincarnation box. And why did, uh, well, yeah, he wasn't left with much. Okie doke. So, main strategy here would probably be twofold. One would be to stun the Hilda with Lawson and just retreat back and have Lucretia pick stuff up uh, afterwards. Uh, yeah. Other one would be. Yeah, I think that'd probably be what my main strategy here. And then Mariel is pretty much going to be doing no damage with the Redeemers. So, honestly, Lost them should be focused on just studying the Hilda and just running away. He should also be positioning... Okay, why did you go in here? You did not... You had no follow-up. Like, if you wanted to follow up, you should have put your Lucretia right here and thrown Order of Creation on her, so she takes basically no damage from this Michelle. Oh, that's why. Oh, wow, but that whiffs, the, that kill whiffs. That's un really unfortunate. Uh, what are you going to do here? Are you going to try to assassinate her? You don't really have any... Yeah, what the heck, man? Like, you had a good idea with the Lost Him stun, but you should have had Lucretia follow up. Rather than have Lost Him do it again. Because Mariel really d has, like, zero range. And what is... Luc Lucretia isn't going to kill at all. So yeah, now Tears kind of just blew one of his e first easy picks, which... Not good. In the long run. And then... What? It, what? Oh, he really wants to get Lost Him stuff back up, but... It's just... I don't know, it's just not good. Also, that kill whiffs, which is really unfortunate. But sometimes that just happens. And then, yeah. He starts running Hilda in, which... It's fine, but now Lucas is just gonna dump AoE onto him. And she's gonna take a lot of damage. Wait. This is not gonna kill. Yeah, because the soldiers weren't getting to attack. Yeah, Tears is just making a lot of mistakes. And then Senna Strike, she's gonna basically dump AoE onto Lucretia and might kill her. And then, yeah, she's gonna take a lot, a lot of damage. Oh, and she doesn't have... Od why, didn't, why didn't he bring Load of Creation? This is probably gonna kill? Yeah. Good job. You got your first kill. Congrats. But, yeah. Uh... Oh, I see. Oh, that's interesting. He must have looked at Hilda to see if she had... Oh, wait. No, she's immune to stun because of the War Gods thing. Yeah, Tears didn't double check that, and neither would have I, because I don't really care about Muriel. But here, uh, Muriel's just gonna go in, smack the Hilda... And then ga gain her uh, damage, well, her guard ignore thing. And then she's gonna probably try to take out the Wedum with, well, the Lost Him. No, she tries to kill the 
the uh, Lucretia, which, okay. Not a really good idea. She's really out of position. And then, I think the... Yep, Lucretia goes down and pretty much Tears is in a very bad spot. And now... <clears throat> yeah, there's really not much you can do at this point. I think this is pretty much game over. And then, to use this flame attack, it's gonna hit a shit ton of people, do a lot of damage, and kill Blossom, and this is over. So, yeah. There's really... At this point, Tears should just surrender, because he has no DPSs to take out his DP... Um, Liana's DPSs. And he's just gonna keep bleeding. Bleeding until this is over. Also, Liana, that was a very good move, because she, she sees the center. Or... Yeah. Yeah, she sees the center at fully, like, the full center at this point. And there's really nothing Tears can do at this point. So, I'm just gonna skip through this, because... Yeah, he's just gonna get blocked out, do nothing, and take a ton of AoE damage. Okay. Yeah, Leon's gonna do nothing, and then Fog's coming in, and then he's just gonna lose. Yeah, and he just has no DPS to clean up the enemy. And, yeah, this is over. So, yeah, I'd say the main issue with tiers is you don't know how to... Uh, you need to improve your offensive game because you are just getting to the point where you're either losing control of the center or you're just not killing your opponents or you lose your DPSs way too early. So, if you actually want to get... If you actually want to start winning, I think you might want to readjust your box or readjust your strategy because you just, it's just too defensive at this point and you're not really exerting any control over the, over the map. Well, in any case, that's that. And so I am actually going to review a couple of my matches now. So let's go to the battle report. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, here's the first one. Yeah, I believe this is the first one I loot first game I lose in my streak, which happens. And, yeah, I think... What did I do here wrong? So, first, I off I ban out Wedum, since my, I only have, like, one tank. And he's P1, so I really can't deal with it. And he bans out my Wedum, so I can't charge in. And what, so, first, he picks up Christian here. And I think what I was a bit fo too focused on was just stuff that can reach over to me rather than things that really synergize with him but then again i wasn't re didn't really know what strategy is going to go for so i banned out uh iron blood and lucretia so oh i can't so uh one second i got one thing okay got that handled so yeah, I banned out the general picks, and then I think I pick up, yeah, Epsilon here, because I just don't want to deal with his tank. <laughs> so, he he starts banning out more of my assassins, which is a good pick, and then he picks up uh, uh, Kyura, which, honestly, not a very good pick against Epsilon, since I can just stealth and just run into her. And here, I think, yeah, I did want to deal with the, yeah, I didn't want to deal with the Gintoki or the... Gintorki or Sherry because they could run Ra Ragshaw on my team because I am not going tank and then I pick up McLean so I can further control what they're doing. So here he bans out my pretty much two healers and then he picks up uh, Le uh, Lana which I should have realized I should have gotten rid of earlier because I don't really have anything that can inflict debuffs. Wait, I should have picked up Lucretia here <laughs> or, uh, or Sissy but I think I pick up Sissy here because I'm running low on stuff. Yeah, I pick up Sissy here, since I wanted to go for the speed buffs. But yeah, honestly, I should have picked up, um, picked up, what's her name? Oh. Uh, yeah, I should have picked up Lucretia here, so I could just throw a black hole or some AoE downs to deal with the Lana. And then I probably should have banned it. Kind of, could have just ignored it, Epsilon if I did that, and then banned the Mariel, banned the Rosen Seal. And then he bans out my Gintoki, which is good, because... I won't be able to deal with him, and then he picks up Frozen Seal, which I pretty much can't really deal with this Lana anymore, because I'm kind of a dummy. 
So I ban out his secondary tank so I could kind of run in and just do guard dispel shenanigans. Yeah, and then I figured Lucretia here is just not super useful because he I can't deal with Alana. I can't do any debuffs. And then I p pick up Elwyn so I can just kind of mess, mess with my opponent. Mess with my opponent and with guard dispel. So basically my main worries right now would be Lana dispelling my debuffs, well, dispelling my stealth to deal with the, to deal with the Kyura. And then he's kind of just tank pushing into the center and I am throwing down mass attack now because it's always good. And then I'm speed boosting my team so I can get more better positioning. So he's gospeling so he can assassinate one of my units, but yeah, it's not a big deal because the only one she can really kill would be probably my Iron Blood. My sissy would be perfectly fine as well. So Mass Crystal Healing goes down. And then I'm positioning my Elwyn up aggressively and then he teleports his Lana in aggressively. And yeah, there's really not much I could do except throw in Lord of the Stream because I want to get my assassin stuff down, but that still leaves him with opportunity to just move one square up and start hitting me with stuff. But but he doesn't. He plays pretty safely and just dumps a black wall on my um, claim, which is kind of bad because now he can't revive. <laughs> but I think he's just going to ignore my McLean at this point. Yeah, and he used the dra the dragon's breath to pop my stealth, which honestly it's not a huge deal. What I should have done is just run in with Riptide a component and then dump water on him, since that'd give McLean a bit more shelf life. <laughs> but here I panic a little bit and then go in and just kill Kaira. Yeah, and I think I'm gonna lose McLean here. Yeah. So yeah, down goes my clang, down goes my shield, and here I'm just in a lot of trouble since I kind of did a two-for-one trade. But I also get the turn priority as well. So not too bad, but it's pretty bad. Because because he got like a shit ton of clocks on all of his AoEs, and I he now he can just keep spamming that on my face, and unfortunately that's not good. Oh yeah, and I get a clock there, which is very nice. I'm like, heck yeah. Yeah, so I'm like, uh, I really can't do anything here. And so, yeah, throwing down the Amazing John Paul to heal up, uh, to heal up his, what's I'm gonna call it, his tank. And then I just go for the, for the Rosen Seal, since that's basically the only real valid target I have at this point. <laughs> And then she retreats, fully heals, and then I'm kind of just like fishing to get my 3C back up on, um, on Epsilon. But there's really not much I can do otherwise. Uh, but before that, I did that, I probably should have done a different move. Like, move up my Sissy White to dispel her troops. <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't really matter anyways. Because... Lana could just dump an AoE and I'd just be doing no damage to this uh, Christian anyways, so yeah. Not good vibes all around. <laughs> so yeah, I sacrificed the soldier because why not? And I want to try to get more, more stuff in, but there's really not much I can do at this point. So here I'm just going to take the first life of Christian, which honestly is not really a huge, it's not really a game changer. So there, down she goes. And then I eat a black hole to the face, and now I pretty much can do no damage. <laughs> and I think this is the first black hole that he doesn't get fully cooled down. But yeah, here I just try to shadow stop. Well, position safely, but honestly, I'm playing way too. My team is way too aggressive to play too passively. So pretty much here. I, oh, yeah, this is a big mistake because now uh, the Lana can hit my team with a 
heaven's sanction and I lose two units and I'm like at this point I can't win so I lose so I just leave so yeah yeah I really need to reevaluate my st strategy in that point but eh, what can you do sometimes okay so next is against devilish which is actually kind of funny because I play him twice this twice in this session and He's a full-on rush box, which is really annoying to deal with because I have basically been playing like 50% of my matches against rush boxes, and that's almost always been as P2. So here he's like, oh, I'm just going to AoE rush, and I'm like, no rush for you. And it's like, and then he just picks up Letitia, which I like, really don't care about because Letitia is just shit. <laughs> so Letitia goes down. I ban out his stuff that can really follow up with her but honestly I should probably just leave well actually I didn't intend to bring a healer anyways so banning out with Clotaire is probably a better idea and then I pick up Yintoki here since he can mop up pretty much everybody here and so yeah I lose Liana, I lose Elwyn which yeah good picks and then he picks up uh, Ares here so he can hit me turn one well hit me in spawn basically so I'm basically just getting rid of his tank units or anything that could really escape my notice. Honestly, instead of getting rid of Lucretia, I probably should have just gotten rid of uh, him. Yeah, a juggler, so I could more effectively rush with Wedham. So yeah, I'm losing just any of my rush supports in my DPS. He picks up uh, Juggler here since he can tank and jump in and stuff. So I'm getting rid of stuff that can revive and fully rush in with... Um, speed boost and then I pick up Sherry she actually doesn't do much this t this game and then yeah I lose at this point I don't really care what I lose so he picks up uh, Varna who can hit me he turn one with her stuff but I don't really care at this point since I have Gintoki and wet him and then I pick up uh, Die Heart since he has some sustain and he can stun and then he picks up uh, what's her that Asara, I believe. So yeah, pretty much I'm just running running in for turn one, dumping down Annihilation, but unfortunately I don't get the kill because I'm using freaking Gargoyles. So yeah, Juggler survives with a good amount of health. Probably should have just banned him out. And then, because if I brought, um, yeah, if I brought, whatchamacallit, um, Air Slash against like a full DPS team, I could easily get an easy pick. So Fearless Hurricane goes down, he's gonna hit basically my entire team. I think he kills off the, uh, what's his name, Die Hard here. Yep, he kills off the Die Hard with a lucky crit. And then, he d fails to kill off my Sherry, and I'm like, I'm gonna force him to come in. It'd be, yeah. And here I'm also positioning my units in a way to force Juggler to basically hit only my Sherry and my Gintoki. And he kills off my Sherry, unfortunately, but I don't really care, because Gintoki is just going to go completely ham on him. So, Tokyo, I use Slit Slow, Juggler down, Wedum drops a whatever debuff, I don't really care. <laughs> okay, Varnet goes in, drops Arrow Rain on me, I don't care, because Gintoki is super tanky and he gets first strike. Also, I still have Sugar Intake, which will just heal him. So, Long Shot Artillery doesn't really do anything. And so, now I just go in, kill off the Ares with Tokyo. La kind of laugh at it. Kind of laugh at Delvish. Delvish goes in, kills my Wedem, I don't care. And then, I believe... I got an act again, kill off Varna. I'm completely safe. I have control of the other side of the map. He goes in and I believe he kills off my kills off my uh, my sissy. Don't care. It's 2v1, but the one on my side is Gintoki, and he will completely mop up with basically two support units. So I'm just positioning myself in a way where I can essentially get the act again on Gintoki. So he heals. I purposely don't act with Gintoki so I can get to act again because 
Yeah, because uh, Gintoki's sugar intake came up and it gave me one turn, one more pull down to get my sword soul back. So, sugar intake, sword soul of the Sara, do a shit ton of damage there. Take out Sara easily, and then. Double go, tries to go in, hit me at all, but I get first strike and instantly kill the Letitia because it's a Letitia. She has our stats, so yeah. Very simple. So next one I play is against uh, another guy with, I think, a Cyrillic name. I'm not too sure. Anyways, uh, I believe, yeah, I lose this one because I'm a bit, I think I'm a bit careless. Yeah, I'm very careless here, and I kind of just don't really think. So yeah, I... Uh, my opponent has a very AoE focused box, and I, I ban out the um, the Wedum first because I don't want to deal with his shenanigans. Because this is an AoE box, I can pretty much get away with no tank. But he picks up um, Christian here, and honestly, I should have first picked up Salon or one of my other assassins because he had four tanks that I don't don't really care about. Well, he had three tanks, so I get rid of the the Lucretia and the Lano because I don't want to bring any debuffs with me. Honestly, I probably could have left the Lano, brought, banned out the Lucretia, and then probably banned out another another unit that would really mess me up, like uh, Light of Genesis. Or I could have just banned out his um, his Rosen Seal. Yeah, I could have banned out Rosen Seal there if I was going to do that. Yeah, I should have done that. In any case, I pick up Gintoki, because generally he's very strong, and then he bans out my Die Heart for stun, and then my uh, Iron Blood for speed boost. He picks up Muriel, which, not a big deal, but honestly, I should have been just focusing on my Assassins. Yeah, I'm not I'm not picking offensively enough, yeah, and I finally pick up, uh, only pick up Epsilon here. And he bans kind of, bans out two units I don't really care about. Yeah, and probably here I should have picked up Warner instead of McLean. Well, McLean's actually not a bad pick here because I can better control the map with his water, but yeah, I don't think he's as effective as Warner would have been because I could easily kill out these three units. And then I ban out his act against support because that would be very troublesome to deal with. And here he picks up Rosen Seal. Yeah, with my early bans, I should have gone for assassins much earlier, because he only really had one, one single target unit that I'd really have to worry about, and that would have been Light of Genesis, because I already banned out his uh, Lucretia and his uh, <clears throat> Lana. So here I'm just uh, mass attacking, and then I'm setting up my Lancer infantry so I can dump it into the. Dump it into the fog next turn to get an act again on Gintoki. Yeah, and then I think I get kind of get panicked here because Bozel gets a breeze here and could hit basically my entire team. But so I decided to teleport McLean in, but I, f I forgot that McLean needs one turn to set up, which is just frustrating. So yeah, I throw down Lord of the Stream, and honestly, I should just throw down a uh, Riptide component instead of... Well, I should have Riptide component in, in and then just Lord of the Storm, uh, and then, then uh, Crushing uh, Terrifying Wave. But live and learn, I suppose. Because, right, really, McLean isn't going to be doing a ton of stuff. Yeah, so now I just rest restrict his movement. Yeah, and here I can't really do much with Light of Genesis. And then he starts just tanking up, so it becomes harder for me to deal with this stuff. And then <clears throat> Bozel just throws down his 3C, which kills off McLean, and silences him, which honestly I shouldn't have been surprised at. So yeah, I'm just kind of throwing at this point. Well, I'm kind of not playing smart, which is just not very good. And here I... 
desperate measures, plan to fully heal him and hopefully get uh, hit that silence off of him. But honestly, he had a Bozel 3C, so that's not happening. And then I throw in uh, throw in Gintoki to get it uh, to spell, spell off. Well, a guard to spell off. And then, yeah, Gintoki takes some damage, but does a good amount of damage and dispels a lot of stuff. And I get a refresh on that. And then I get a kill off of... Kill on the... What's her name? Which, yeah, it's fine, but it's not really... Really effective, I'd say. And so... I get... Lose that. And then, honestly, I, at this point, I probably just need to risk it and try to kill off the Bozel, but... Yeah. Also, I got a guard to spell here, and so I can teleport in, and then I try to get a kill on the Bernhardt, which I miss by like 175 HP, which pretty much ends the match here. And yeah, that um, that miracle buff on Bernhardt really saved his bacon. Here, I'd basically just lose because I can't. I just can't do damage. And then, yeah, I just lose my Epsilon here and my Light of Genesis, and it's like, yeah, I lost. I come, yeah, I just completely misplayed all this, and I misplayed uh, Pig Ban, which happens. So, yeah. I probably could have done a little bit better with my Pig Bans as well, so. Yeah, not can't do, can't win them all, I suppose. And then, next one is against Chibi, which I think I had a really pretty easy time with, to be honest. Oh, yeah. So his team is very much a tank, kind of a tank push, but more focus tank push, but more focused on single target. Which, yeah, also he has Ashmere, which she is really terrible. I wouldn't, I highly doubt I'd see her in like uh, playoffs at all. So yeah, so I ban out Gintoki and uh, 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 Yanni because just the teleport support would be really annoying to deal with. Though, in all honesty, I probably didn't need to worry about it too much, since she's probably not that high level at this point. So, he picks up... I pick up... Yeah, and here, I just pick up pick up Epsilon, because I'm determined to go... Um, go Assassins for this.
Damn it, I just realized I was on mute. Uh, in any case, uh, what I was basically uh, saying throughout like this this match was that I really didn't really care what he was doing, um, Chibi was doing, because I had my own McLean to cancel out his McLean's water, and this me uh, moving McLean like, up here without throwing water on himself was just kind of a bad idea, because now McLean... McLean becomes an easy just assassination target for me. Uh, any case, I missed this kill by 45, 46 HP, which was very, very frustrating. But I, then I realized that if I threw on Supernova onto Epsilon uh, and Die Hard, I would have easily gotten this kill. And I'm just kind of considering changing up my Die Hard's weapon now, since he's using a Sealed Guardian rather than that uh, Breaking Light that gives you some extra damage after moving. So in any case, I kind of kind of uh, move in an aggressive way rather than throwing my Die Hard right there. But in all honesty, it's not a huge deal. And here, I really can't do any follow-up at the moment, so I'm just going to position my Light of Genesis back so she doesn't die. And here, uh, Die Hard lives. Because... Um, well, he lives because he get his talent gives him some extra damage reduction when near f women, and then, yeah, here I just kill out the McLean pretty easily. Yeah, I'm kind of uh, interested to see how close that was. One second. So, allies only, and then watch the animation. So, go in. And then... Okay, yeah. I pretty cleanly did that. Off, and then, yeah. One major threat is down. I lose my Die Hard, which, and honestly, with Die Hard did his job. He doesn't need to do anything more. And also, I didn't realize that, um, I didn't realize that, um, a, a Neo Elmo could hit so hard, and I might throw, throw on, um, throw, yeah, I might give her my own, let me, yeah, uh, what, uh, what's your call it? Yeah, I might give her a, Gift of Eternal Life as well, because that seems like a pretty good choice. So yeah, now I think, yeah, I think, oh, interesting. So, she used an invitation to dance, but I think Sound Ballad was still on cooldown. So she doesn't get the range buff to attack my McLean, which works out better for me. I don't really care, though. So now I just throw down the Lord of the Stream so I can get my Assassinate skill back up. And dump more water all over the place. And then I just heal up, heal up my McLean. Just kind of wait wait to put myself in a good position to assassinate this Ashmere. Because I'm in honestly no rush to finish this off. And I don't want to really risk whiffing a kill on the Ashmere. So, but the other thing is that Chibi really can't do anything to me. And plus, I'm also just waiting for my, uh, my act again to come up. Which comes up this turn. So I can guarantee to kill the Ashmere. So, Ashmere uses Sand Ballad here. She, again, doesn't do anything. I'm just blowing blowing moves on my uh, Light of Genesis because she's really not going to be doing anything, and I just want to kind of see how much damage I can do. And I do a decent amount. But, yeah. Chibi is pretty much just stuck behind my wall of water and can't do shit. So, now I throw down Terrifying Wave to further restrict his movement. 
And then here, I believe, I get the opportunity to... Yeah. I get the opportunity to just act again my McLean. And assassinate the Ashmere with... In pretty much pure safety. So, yeah. Ashmere goes down here. And, yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty good for me to be cautious here. And then I just finish off the Ashmere with Epsilon. Yep. Yeah, and the th other thing is... Um, Lightbringer is completely stuck in water, so... My Epsilon has no... There's no chance my Epsilon is going to be threatened at all. And so, yeah. My McLean eats a first hit. I throw down a Riptide component like this, so I can further block... <laughs> Further block off uh, Chibi's movement, and then I think I throw down Swirling Whirlpool here. Yeah. Throw down Lord of the Storm right there. Further restrict movement, and just kind of be a, a general menace. And then, yeah. Pretty much I have this in the bag. I'm just going to keep taking pot shots at the Lightbringer with my Light of Genesis, and I think I get a kill here. So yeah, I throw down a, out of creation onto my Light of Genesis, so she can actually do damage, and then I just fart down my 3C, I think. Oh, nope. Yeah, I just fart down my Holy Light, take off a life, because this Lightbringer has, like, very bad defenses, but then again, I think she's only, like, 3-star. 2-star, yeah, this is 3-star, so yeah, not much she can do. Like, I wasn't even expecting that to kill. Wait, one sec. Damn, okay, I think this is actually 5 star. So yeah, just the stats on the Lightbringer is not, not very good. And I think right here, I'm like, oh, if that killed, then my 3C will definitely kill. So I just throw down 3C on Lightbringer, and she dies. And then I win. Because Chibi has, like, no damage left. So yeah. There's that. Alright, what else? So, next would be the game against Yash. And this time I am P1 against his box, which... It's very offensive. Very offensive with uh, El Neo Elmo again. And, yeah, nothing... T I'm not too worried about anything except the Wedum at this moment, because... Yeah, I'm not too worried about... Oh, actually, I don't really care about the wet. I'm like, I think here I'm pretty much like, oh. Yeah, why did I why did I ban out the wet? Because now, oh, I'm pretty much forced to pick my tank rather than play aggressively. Huh. So now he picks up his tank. And then I ban out his uh, infantry support and revivals because I want to go assassin. Yeah, and so he's banning out my my meteor units, and I'm like, uh, no, dang, I need something good to deal with the Gintoki, so I pick up Lucretia. And then he bans out my teleport support and my speed boost, picks up Elmo, which, honestly, I don't really have any debuffs to really do anything, so I don't really care. I pick up my Lucretia in case he wants to try to stun me or rush me. And then, well, I pick up Rosen Seal. And then he picks up Sherry here, which is a fine pick, but I thought she wouldn't really be doing much since she'd have to go through my, um, my, uh, my Christiane. And then he picks up Ashmere last because Ashmere, I don't know, he should have probably picked up. I honestly think he should have picked up, lost him there for the movement support. So here, I'm just like setting up my team so I can put myself in a position to mess with them. But I honestly should have che double checked this Sherry stats beforehand because it's kind of weird. And he kind of picked uh, Cherry into like a tank like this, and I should have realized that this is actually a uh, genius staff Sherry, and you'll see why that matters later. I almost know this match to be honest.
Yeah, so here I'm just like getting set up to speed boost my team so I can be a, just a menace. But honestly, uh, now that I think about it, I probably should have u been using, uh, instead of giant zombies so I can ensure the kill against the Sherry, I should have been using gargoyles because it just gives me a lot more flexibility in my movement versus him. So, yeah, he's p trying to go to the center just like me. And here I set up my speed boost so I can start getting into position to make more plays. So yeah, position aggressively. And like my main focus right now is the Sher the Sherry and the Sherry and the Gintoki. And here I'm just positioning myself in a way because this way because I'm just confident my my team can pretty much handle this sherry. But honestly, I should've been I need should have been a lot more careful. Anyways, that's for more later in the match. So here he moves Sherry like this. And I'm just under the assumption that this is an ingenious staff. And yeah, I get really cocky with my Epsilon. Actually, yeah, if I was using Flyer Epsilon here, I could have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, I could have just thrown him right there. And it's the only unit he would really ha could really threaten me with would be the Ashmere, who kind of hit doesn't really hit hard. Yeah, even yeah, even if he did that, I could still just be a menace. And here I try to get a, a kill off on the Lightbringer, but she survives with a good amount of HP, even though she gets slapped with a bunch of debuffs. Yeah, I think I was just a bit too worried about the Gintoki in all honesty. Yeah. Yeah, here I should have. If I realized this was a. If I realized this was a genius staff, I would have just gone, gone in and dunked the Sherry right now, <laughs> or the Kentoki. whichever. Oh, well, whatever. But here I'm like, oh, I'll just blow up uh, her first life, since I wasn't really worried about anything. And then the Sherry comes in, and surprises me with her assassination of my, uh, with of my Epsilon. Like, oh shit, I was really careless here. And yeah, clean, easy kill on him. And like shit, I am at a huge disadvantage now. I really need to kill it off the, kill off the um, Lightbringer now, so I can just menace him with my, with my Lucretia. So yeah, now I'm like, I don't need my, I don't need my uh, Iron Blood now, and I think Iron Blood gets killed here. Yeah. And so my in assumption here is like I need to kill off that Gintoki stat. <laughs> also, I brought Fallen Petals on my Christian, which honestly probably shouldn't have. So yeah, my Lucretia takes a good amount of damage, but it's not really anything to worry about. So I throw on Floral Regalia, and I'm just kind of like I need to get in and start making plays to get rid of this Sherry so she doesn't act again. Pretty much take the only other play that I could do right now by killing off the staff and then he's positioning very aggressively now since he thinks he has a a good shot of like just winning this outright. But the thing is his positioning is not good enough for because I still have position swap on yeah, I still have position swap on my Lucretia, and I'm not in range of any of his stuff, and I still have a tank up. So I'm like, I need to turtle a bit here before or I can do anything, to, so I can pick stuff off. And then he moves up his Sherry one spot, and I just pick her off, easy. Which is a huge mistake, because then I he forgot that I can just swap positions with Lucretia, bring her back, and then he just magic pulse her, and my team is completely safe. And now, my Lucretia has basically no threats to her, and I can just go in and completely... I can just go in and just dunk stuff. 
And then the Ashmere really doesn't do anything except just buff. Which pretty much that's her main her main it main use is now, I guess. And then I believe he scooter dashes me here right here right here. And I'm like, I don't care. Cause that's not good enough to finish off my Lucretia, because I can still just move in. And then I go take out the Elma. And I also moved up my Lucretia here, so I wouldn't get blocked into the fog. So yeah, he just goes in, takes out my Lucretia's first life, but the thing is, now my Sherry can go protect her. And now I'm pretty much safe. And the uh, Ashmi really needed to start moving in and actually doing stuff, rather than sitting back there. So now, Yash just keeps buffing up his Gintoki, but unfortunately it's just not good enough because I still... Yeah, I just have, I have the space to move around safely, and he's just not attacking, which he should be doing, because now he's just seeding, like, seeding, seeding, like, pressure to me, and then, yeah, I take out Ashmere, he gets his act again, but really doesn't do much. Yeah, I think he figured that he could just get Scooter Dash up again and just push me into the fog again, which, not a good, not a good strategy. So here he finally uses Tokyo and does the single target attack, does some damage to me, and whiffs the kill. Doesn't even get the first life on her. It's that's terrible. And so now I just finish off Kentucky with uh, a Dark Reaper, which honestly I could have just done last turn. Well, whatever. I win that one. And I'm gonna take a quick water closet break, so I'll be back in a second. One moment.
God dang it, I forgot to unmute. Uh, in any case, um, basically what I was saying is, I wasn't really care- I didn't really care about pick- I didn't really care- that first ban on my Resident Seal was pointless, because a lot of my units have self-sustain- a lot- a lot of DPS have self-sustain anyway, so I can pretty much get away with that. And then, I pretty much picked up Sissy White, fourth pick, so I could deal with the Sherry, so they'd have- the Sherry and the L1 would have to go through a tank, and I didn't really care about the Kyura pick because uh, if I just pick off one of his units, she becomes uh, Kyura becomes massively gimped. Also, I have a ton of like speed boost support and assassin support here, so I'm pretty much in a very good position. And so he's trying to push into the center like most tank push do us, but I'm positioning very aggressively so I can. Get an eye on what he's doing, and honestly, if I wanted to do that, I probably should have moved my Die Heart later, because if he got, like, a speed boost on uh, Kyura or, like, the Elwyn, I'd be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> so here I... Sp yeah, I speed boost my team. Oh, also, just note, I pick up, uh, picked up uh, Sansi's on Gintoki, because I wasn't too worried about Elwyn, because I had Sissy White to kind of deal with that. Yeah, yeah, I move up my my Epsilon super aggressively because uh, he has no threats in this in this match at all. So pretty much he's gonna carry my butt dumb butt. And here I believe I just throw down mass attack for Gintoki. And then I also fart out a Lancer and position aggressively so if the L1 decides to come in I don't need to worry about it. And uh, Sherry, I think here he kind of realizes that my I'm pretty much going for the L1 right now, and he tries to have Sherry support him. But one major issue he didn't do is he didn't give the crystal protection to all of his units. He only gave it to all but L1. I'm like, ooh, this is an easy pickup, an easy cheese. So I go in with uh, Die Hard. I smack him hard, take off his first life, and then I stun him. <laughs> And then uh, he does get the L the Elwin to come back and heal him up a bit, but I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> I have Sissy White to protect my L my Die Heart now, and now I throw down long term investment on uh, what's his what's his name uh, Epsilon, and uh, <laughs> the Kyra whiffs the kill because she has no attack buffs. It's hilarious. And so then I'm like, oh, Kyra's down. She can't move. Kill her. I get to kill the L1. And now my Epsilon has basically no threats at the moment because Sherry didn't bring uh, her Shadow Raid, so she can't can't do that. If she attacks the Elite Mercenary, she's just going to give a speed boost to my Gintoki, and she probably have to burn her second, second seal to kill off my Die Heart. She can't break my Epsilon's shield, and even if she, she did, she wouldn't get the act again. And then Kyra is just doing nothing now. And so yeah, uh, I pretty much won, <laughs> won at this point. So yeah, Sherry goes in, takes out the mercenary, I don't care. Gives my Gintoki a uh, second C boost, so now he has base 7 movement. And then she gets to act again, does nothing for some reason, I'm like, whatever, I'm just gonna go in and kill her. So yeah, at this point it's pretty much o uh, it's over for Nomad. And I think he surrenders at this point. Yeah, and that's just a meaty 1700 uh, attack, and yeah, Nomad runs away after that, and after I easily kill off two of his units. Okay, and so for the final match of this video, I am going to be playing against Devlish again, and this time he gets P1, which is very annoying, because he is playing a very rush box. So yeah, first ban the... Um, first ban the Akka, and then he bans out my Rosen Seal here, and then picks up the Letitia. And here I sh I sh I'm like, eh, whatever. I'll get rid of the Ares and Clotera since those are two units that'll hit me. Turn one. And yeah, and they're also very annoying. But I forget that Clotera sucks. And I could have just picked up... Picked up, uh... Uh, Liana. What I should have done is banned out Ares and, uh, Wedham. Because I forgot Wedham has a very annoying... A very, very annoying... 
uh, AoE that synergizes really well with this clown. In any case, he picked, uh, bans out my Liana and wet him. Honestly, he should have just banned out both my healers, in all honesty, because I would have a much harder time dealing with him if that happened. He picks up Wedum, and then uh, he bans out my... I ban out anything that could really support, like follow up with him, except uh, except for this clown. And then I pick up my Sissy White, since he left me that healer. <laughs> and then he picks up his Julian here. And yeah, he starts banning out my self-sustain units, which, yeah, he needs to do, because I will just completely, ru completely run over him. And yeah, I'm just... I keep banning out units that can follow up with his team. And so, yeah. He's banning out my self-sustained units and my revive units. He picks up uh, Luin because he's basically... He has no other units that can really follow up with... Really follow up this team. So I ban out his teleport support and I ban out the Kreisha. Since they can rush in and pick up Epsilon since he has sustain. And then here I pick up... Uh, da -da -da -da. Pick up Lucretia here, since she has some self-sustain as well, and she can be a bit of a menace if I throw in... Well, mess, w mess around with my... What to my calls it? Yeah, if I mess around with... With my puppet, so I could block off the... The... Wedem, but then I realized that it... It really wouldn't have mattered anyways, because Wedem can just jump on my team and do whatever he wants. So yeah, just... Well, whatever. So here I just throw down my faction buff, buff on my team, just pray that my uh, my aura protects my team. And here he's like, do I hit hit Pizza's entire team or actually that was a big mistake. Yeah, instead of going there, he should have. Wait one second. Yeah. Yeah, he should have moved slightly to the right to jump here, then move all the way around and hit my entire team, rather than be a complete bonehead. So yeah, now he only hits three of my team, and I'm like, crud. And then I just heal up my team. And now... And then Julian's talent doesn't activate enough to actually come in and hit me. So he has zero follow-up. So his uh, Wedum is pretty much fucked. And I can just clear that up. And then... Yeah, clear that up. And then heal up almost the full, and then I go in and just kill off the Wedum. But I almost lose my Sherry as well, which... Oops. But yeah, then Sherry heals to full, and I'm like, worth. Yeah, so I'm pretty much just moving my positioning my way away that my entire team doesn't get dunked on by freaking Julian. And yeah, I'm just positioning in in a way so he Julian can come in and just hit only yeah, he can only hit Yeah, so he can only hit part of my team and then I just pick him up. Also, I just want to double check one thing. Okay, yeah, so one, two, three. Okay, so yeah, that range is three. So yeah, I go in, kill off the Julian. I'm like, whatever, I win. So that's a two for zero trade at the moment. <laughs> and then I um, magic pulse my um, Sissy White so I can heal up more. Yeah, I get rid of more debuffs, and then I throw down this Mercenary, which doesn't really do much, just... Put it there, mostly just for uh, body blocking. She hits my team. I don't really care again. And then I move my Sherry so I can actually heal her. And then Lewin is pretty much forced to go here to actually drop his AoE on me. And I think he gets the first kill on... First kill on my Lucretia, which I don't really care about. My Sissy White's immune to fix damage, so she doesn't die. And then I just drop a little damage on uh, Luin, which doesn't do much. And then this Luin uh, only has 700 defense. I easily pick him up in this game, basically. So, yeah. Yeah, and then Delwish just runs away. Because he can't. He threw in three units, got zero kills, and yeah. Pretty much nothing he could do at this point. 
So yeah, I think the main takeaway is that uh, both the Devilish and I could have played better. Like, there, I didn't really need a tank since he's going... His whole strategy is to go AoE, rush, and honestly, I could have kind of countered that by just letting him get the Clotaire and then use my... Li uh, give my Liana, say, like, prayer, prayer, uh, prayer, and then probably not act again since that match would have just ended in one turn and I wouldn't have to get, have the time to pull that off. And then, yeah, pretty much just pray that Clotaire gives me... I get good de good buffs on the spells from my Liana. And then, at that point, Julian couldn't do anything. You know, Del was pretty much forced to pick uh, Letitia turn one, because I banned out his Akaya, and I would I would have banned out Letitia second turn if he didn't pick her. But yeah. Also, Devilish could have made my life a lot harder if he actually hit my entire team with Wedem's Whatever Breath. And just kind of get us to show that you need to be a little bit more careful about like leaving Wedem as well, because he can do a lot more than be a menace with single targets. Anyways, I think that'll be it for me. Thanks for joining, everyone, and I'll try to get this video posted uh, later today. Alright, have a good one. Bye.